My coverage of CES 2019 is brought to you by Corsair, Enermax, Deepcool, and Cooler Master. Guys, I'm at Corsair now. Corsair is a sponsor for CES 2019, so big thanks to them. They have some new cases, they have some mice I'm pretty excited about, and Elgato has joined the Corsair team, so they have some cool stuff too. So Corsair has a new version of their Spec Alpha case. This is called the Spec Delta. If I'm being perfectly honest, I was never a huge fan of the aesthetics of the Spec Alpha, but they've made a new version, and this is apparently a very popular case in certain regions. So the upgrades include more fans. So you're gonna get three RGB fans in the front, and then you will get a non-RGB fan in the back. This is, this is the case how it will ship over here, and this is Corsair's presentation version. You're also gonna get a magnetic dust filter up on top, and then they've redone this front panel. So it's still the same shape as the original Spec Alpha, but it is a, an acrylic sort of smoked acrylic acrylic panel. It doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of airflow going on around the edges here. This is kind of locked in. There is a bit of a gap down here at the bottom, so I imagine this will take some testing to see if this is going to be effective as an airflow solution. But this case is only going to cost $79.99 and you get those included fans, so that's a pretty good price to performance metric, I suppose. Next up is the 275Q. This is also going to be a $79.99 case. The 275R is what it's based on, so internally, functionally, everything is the same. It's just going to cost 10 bucks more, and for that, you're going to get sound down dampened side, pa side panels, so this is not a case with an acrylic panel or tempered glass or anything. Solid side panels, but they do have sound dampening material as well. And then you're also going to get a multi-channel fan controller, but then you're also going to get a PWM fan repeater. So you can actually hook up up to six PWM fans to that, and it does come with two 120 millimeter PWM fans included. So if you're looking for a quiet case, the 275Q, Q for quiet. That makes sense. Next up is the H100i RGB Platinum Special Edition. So pretty much functionally the same as the original H100i RGB Platinum, but this one is all white. It also comes with Special Edition Light Loop Series RGB fans. Light Loop Series fans from Corsair, not necessarily known for their excellent static crusher in a radiator environment. These have been reconfigured so that they are better for use with the radiator, but they still have the Light Loop RGB LEDs on both sides. These are all just white, but you can turn RGB on if you want to as well. Beyond that, you just get a really clean looking 200. 40 millimeter all in one with the really also clean sleeved cables on the tubing there too. Uh, looking really nice. I, I kind of like how this looks. Matches well with this mouse down here. Speaking of mice, now if you read the headline for this video, you might have noted that uh, Corsair updated my favorite mouse. Now if I'm being perfectly honest, I have a few favorite mice. My Onyx has one or two that I really like, but this is the M65, and this has had a few variations over the years. They've updated and uh, refined it, and now they've actually slightly adjusted some of the contours here, so it's a little bit more comfortable in the hand. They slightly repositioned and made larger the forward and back buttons, as well as the uh, sniper button there, so it's a little bit easier to access. They've got the weight down below 100 grams, although you can still add these weights to it to bring it up to about 115 grams total. Still has the durable aluminum frame available in both black and white. And then it's got a precision PixArt sensor that Corsair worked and developed with PixArt on. It's 8,000 DPI. High DPI isn't necessarily a huge factor when it comes to a sensor, but you can actually change your DPI in one DPI step. So 18,000 different DPI settings that you can have with the M65 RGB Elite. Next is the Iron Claw RGB. This is a palm grip specific mouse. So it still has that same Pixar 18,000 DPI sensor. Uh, the weights, they've gotten uh, down pretty low on this one too, only 105 grams. And I will say that when you grip this mouse, like I have reasonably sized hands, a little on the larger side perhaps, the contour here just really, it really fills up your palm. That's the only way I can describe it, but it feels pretty comfortable. So if you're a palm gripper, I think this would be a great solution for you. Then beyond that, you still have 50 million click Omron switches, seven programmable buttons, and uh, this also has RGB LED as well as an indicator there for your DPI settings, which you can adjust via the two buttons on the top. Now the RGB Elite and the Iron Claw are both $59.99. Very reasonable prices for uh, Corsair high quality mice. And then over here, we've got the Harpoon RGB Wireless. This one's only gonna be 50 bucks, $49.99. And this one's actually pretty flexible as wireless mice go. So for your main wireless connection, it uses Corsair Slipstream Wireless Technology, which is RF based, uh, but Corsair has worked with it to bring it down to sub one millisecond response time, 500 micro seconds, which is really, really fast. So if you're concerned about response time with a wireless mouse, that should alleviate some of your concerns. I'd be interested to do a side-by-side -side comparison plugged in via USB against Flipstream, but you can also connect via Bluetooth. Bluetooth is going to introduce more latency, but gives you more flexibility if you just want to take this to connect up to a laptop really quickly. And of course, you can plug it in via USB if you want to do that as well, to charge it or to uh, have a direct USB connection. Again, a very lightweight mouse, just weighing 99 grams, and you have up to 60 hours of battery 
life if you're connected via Bluetooth. You're going to get less than that if you're using the Slipstream wireless technology, and that's just because the refresh rate is so fast it's going to use more power. You have RGB lighting support, of course, as well. You have a DPI switcher button in the middle, forward and back keys, and uh, a fairly small design, but uh, again, very comfortable in the hand. That's the Harpoon RGB wireless. Here's some Elgato stuff. Elgato has joined the Cursair team. They have the Stream Deck, of course. They have the 4K60 Pro Capture card, which I've been a big fan of. But they also have this key light now. Check it out. Lighting for streamers. Because lighting can often be challenged if you're streaming from your bedroom or something like that. These lights are very slim. They have an array of LEDs that go around the edge, so it's edge lit. They have a very high CRI rating, although they are not actually officially listed for CRI compatibility, but a very good color reproduction. And you can easily mount these to the back of your desk. Not only that, but they also are Wi-Fi controlled, so you can control them via an app on your phone or an application on your computer, or you can also tie them into your stream deck. So you could use your stream deck buttons to push and turn on your lights, or you could create a crazy macro where you push a button or two on your stream deck and it turns on your lights and starts your stream and does an announcement for your fans and gets you streaming without having to worry about doing all that stuff individually. Beyond that, the 4K60 Pro has also been recently updated for HDR support, and then Elgato has also been working on an app. This is actually for iOS, not available for Android, but for streamers who want to stream stuff from an application, the app will allow you to stream directly to a computer. So if you're gonna do Pokemon Go or something like that in the future, uh, you can capture it pretty accurately. This is apparently something that's not widely available as an iOS app. They've developed it from the ground up. It connects via Wi-Fi as long as you're on the same network, so you're not gonna lose your network or internet connectivity from the laptop you're capturing on, but also can access the camera on the tablet or iPhone or whatever you're using. So you can position that wherever you want and have sort of a wireless camera that you can move around and then capture onto your computer. Almost done here, just a couple more products to show. This is the Corsair One i40. Uh, the Corsair One has been around for a little while now. It's an all-contained computer with a very small footprint, stands vertically, has a really good cooling solution implemented with dual 120 millimeter all-in-one liquid coolers. Uh, this is not the type of thing you could put together yourself. But they've now updated this one and integrated an i9-9700K as well as a GeForce RT TX 2080, 8 gig. That's pretty impressive. Lots of connectivity on this via the I.O. in the back, or the front I.O., which is down there at the bottom. And uh, apparently when Corsair showed this at their press conference, it was asked if they could just sell the case by itself. The answer is a resounding no. <laughs> that is simply because the case itself would be very expensive. You'd have to have those all-in-ones also integrated, and flexibility for uh, integrating your own hardware would be very challenging with this. So you'll have to buy the Corsair One I-140 as an all-in-one computer, but for those of you who don't want to build something and want something with a very small footprint, there it is. And here's the last thing I'm going to show at Corsair. I really like small power supplies, and this is the SF750. So they've upgraded the SF series, 750 watts. It is 80 plus platinum rated, and it's still fully modular, and it's still so, so super tiny. So still maintaining the very small SFX form factor. I have a shot of the internal components. Corsair always does really clean work with the internals on their power supplies. Still just rocking a 92 millimeter fan. This does have a zero RPM fan mode. It comes with a bracket, so if you want to install this in a small like mini ITX case that still has ATX support but you want more space in there you can install that with the included bracket so if you're looking to build a very small computer and you're feeling like the 500 550 watt SFX options are not up to snuff if you want to drop in like a 2080 Ti or something like that this will be what you want to go for but guys that's all the time I have for here at the Corsair suite I want to end by of course thanking my sponsors once again for CES 2019 Corsair as well as Cooler Master Deep Cool and Enermax I have a ton more videos coming at you real soon so hit the thumbs up button and we'll see you guys in the next one.